So you read the title. Supplements can cause liver damage and this is a serious topic that almost nobody talks about or even just understands. I see and hear it so many times with people that I start to consult. They take five, six different supplements and have no idea what they're actually doing. So listen, I get it. You want to try to heal yourself naturally or to just get healthier. That is great and I understand that. But what is not so great is that you have probably never heard that these things can have side effects like liver damage. And here are some studies for that if you don't believe me. People were actually diagnosed with liver damage taking those supplements. So first of all, I'm Lancelot and around three years ago I was taking way too much zinc and selenium, two essential minerals. Didn't know I was taking too much and honestly I felt great for a few months. Then I suddenly started getting insomnia and bad digestive issues. So what did I do in response? Well, of course, I took even more zinc and selenium because I had no idea that these supplements were causing my issues. So fast forward, I was having really bad issues and was forced to go on a very strict diet and had to change a lot of stuff in my life. And that's really the problem that I see with so many people. You have to realize that something good especially in terms of nutrition, can turn into something bad. For example, in this study, they focused on liver injury associated with turmeric. And I'm just going to read one line in the conclusion. Turmeric causes potentially severe liver injury that is typically hepatocellular. Wow. That is just the complete opposite of what you mostly hear online about these superfoods, these health bombs. So... What does this mean now? Is, is turmeric, maybe you're taking turmeric, is turmeric bad for you now? Or is it good? Oh, you're gonna hate my answer. Neither. To understand all of this better, you first of all need to understand health. Health means complete, being complete. So to translate that into a healthy diet, a healthy diet has all components that your body depends on. An example for healthy humans were our ancestors, the hunter-gatherers. In nature, cancer doesn't really exist and degenerative diseases do not exist. Now, you're probably thinking like I used to think that our ancestors only got 40 years old. And so they didn't reach the age to get degenerative diseases. Not true, because 40 years is actually a mean value and simplified one half of us died in our youth or childhood because in our developmental stages we are very vulnerable and can't go long without food. Also, the tiger usually goes after the baby deer, not the grown deer. The other half that survived their youth or childhood actually got around 70 years. And that is incredible in my opinion. I mean, think of all the life-threatening dangers that we are exposed to in nature. So now that we've understood that, what did these people do to be that healthy? In nature, food isn't available in abundance. And also my European ancestors definitely had no turmeric or some other herbs from South America. But what all of these healthy groups around the world had were all vitamins, minerals and essential fatty acids in the correct ratio. That is really the point here, in the correct ratio. And I'm telling you, almost everyone nowadays has severely imbalanced nutrients. Now getting back to that question, should you take your turmeric or other herbs now or not? In my opinion, you should first of all focus on correcting your diet and getting your vitamins, minerals and essential fatty acids in the correct ratio. Why? Almost everything you eat needs to be metabolized by your liver that makes your liver very important. In your body you have certain enzymes, neurotransmitters, just your whole biochemistry depends on certain minerals and vitamins. By the way, these sheets can be downloaded via the link in the video description. So vitamins and minerals cannot be replaced by an herb. Herbs can help and that is great, but they usually don't fix the root cause. They rather work as a band-aid. And I'm personally someone that rather rips off the band-aid and tries to heal the actual wound. 
By the way, your minerals and vitamins cannot be corrected by just taking a multivitamin. I feel like I have to say it at this point. In fact, these multivitamins often mess up your ratios even more. The more stressful things for your liver are typically the things more nutritious, more potent, more healthy. As an example for that, animal liver has a lot of vitamins and minerals, but that's also very stressful on your liver. You don't want to have liver more than every two months, maybe. Then something like turmeric, extremely high in plant compounds. This much turmeric can be as stressful as a whole normal meal. And by the way, you can identify high plant compound foods very easily. When they have a strong color, they have a lot of plant compounds because these plant compounds turn them green, yellow, whatever. As an example of that, kidney beans, strong, dark, purple color, green cabbage, strong, dark, green, or sweet potatoes, strong, orange. Multivitamins, herb extracts, oregano oil, all very hard on your liver. Now that doesn't make all of these foods bad all of a sudden. The key takeaway is to consume small amounts of these foods, okay? So don't try to always pick the more nutritious things. And I see people online bombing themselves with green juices, turmeric shots. And that just reminds me so much of myself taking way too much zinc and selenium. And I felt great as well, yes. But at some point you're going to have to pay for what you're doing. It's like taking money from a bank. At some point you're going to have to pay it back. Oh, and then you're going to realize they have interest rates. Now even green tea was in these studies as an extract which caused liver damage. So I just wanted to make this video for you to understand that these things that we are always being told that are so good for us aren't always good for us. They need to be used in a certain way and usually for a limited amount of time. And then they can be good. Now because you've been staying in this video so long, I'm actually giving you a list of supplements that you need to be extra careful with when it comes to liver health. Most of them shouldn't be taken as a supplement ever. By the way, you can check liver damage via a blood test if ALP, ALT, AST, or GGT are elevated, then you have liver damage. But keep in mind that this is a very bad state, then you have liver cirrhosis. So these tests are designed for sick people and not for you to be optimally healthy. So in short, just because you don't have elevated liver enzymes doesn't mean that your liver is working optimally. By the way, repairing your liver just takes patience and a correct minimalistic diet with your vitamins, minerals and fatty acids in the correct ratio. People ask me all the time, what can I take for my liver, this, that. You almost don't take anything, that's the point. And if you do everything correct, you're gonna feel good along the way. So you can't heal your liver in two weeks. It can actually take up to four years depending on your state. But as I said, if you're doing everything correct, you're gonna feel good along the way. So hopefully that cleared up some of the confusion. If you want to increase your health and get on a diet that serves you and not you the diet, then check the first link for a consultation with me. Good health I wish.